Hello book friends! These are all of the books I read in the month of August. I have nine and a half books to talk about, so let's get right to it. So this month I started off a new series. You may have seen it. It is the rereading Harry Potter in my 30s series. So this month I read the first four books in the series. We'll get to all of them. But let's start off with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This book was a really good introduction to the series. One of my worries going into this book was that I remember this being such an epic story and that just so much happened in this book. But when I looked at the book, it was only a little bit over 300 pages and I was like, Ooh, this is gonna be a little bit tight. I thought it was gonna feel rushed and there's just gonna be too much going on in such a short book, but I was wrong. It didn't end up feeling rushed at all. Just because of the way the chapters were set up, each chapter felt like its own little short story. And so there was really no time wasted. There was no downtime. It was just every chapter was a main event and there was no like waffling time in between in order to flesh out a timeline. It was just, we knew how long the timeline was. It was the length of the school year and there were little indications given that helped you, that helped the reader get their bearings where we were in the school year. But besides that, it didn't really matter the specific date and time of any particular event and chapter. Every chapter was a main event where Harry and the other two learn something that is important to the plot going forward. And so everything just felt important and moved the plot forward. And so I thought it really worked. If you want to know my full thoughts about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, there are plenty of them. I have the first video in my series linked below and in the cards. So the second book I read was Set on You by Amy Lee. This book is a contemporary rom-com about a curvy fitness influencer. When she's at the gym, she meets a guy. He appears douchey at first, but he turns out to be a nice guy. They get together. Nothing super original in plot or concept. It has the usual romance tropes. It's happy and casual. I guess I would consider them enemies to lovers although they weren't really like enemies because they didn't know each other. What makes this book special is the main protagonist is a curvy half Asian woman. And that is something that you just hardly ever see in books. Maybe there might be a curvy person or an Asian person, very rarely a half Asian person, but just to have all of these combined as one, like I am a half Asian person and I really never see myself represented in books. So just the fact that she was half Chinese is what's exciting to me. We like representation. I also like that she is a fitness influencer and she is curvy. As in, just because you aren't shredded doesn't mean you're some sort of turd that should be embarrassed to be seen in the gym. The gym should be a safe place for everybody. And in a lot of cases, it's not. And I like that there are books like this that are trying to break that stereotype. But seriously, like that's gym culture. I've been in a 24 hour fitness. It was awful. There were so many gym bros, it was so gross. I went home and I ordered a treadmill. I also like that this book had a really pragmatic discussion of health at every size. Health at every size can be a really controversial and touchy topic, whether you are for it or against it. And I just felt like this book discussed it in a really healthy and balanced way. So overall, the story was cute. It was nothing special, but I think the cultural commentary and breaking of stereotypes is really what is important about this book. So the next book I read was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is the Harry Potter book that when I was a kid, it was always the least compelling to me. And going into this challenge, I still thought this was gonna be the least compelling. And after reading four books so far, I can honestly say this is still the least compelling. This is still my least favorite, but it's still really good. For me, it just feels like this book is kind of an in-between mission that's there to teach lessons and give information, but it's not something that advances the main plot that much. The main plot being, as we know, get rid of Voldemort once and for all. And actually, I guess looking back on it, it kind of does move that forward, but you don't really know what's happening at the time. I feel like the main thing we got from this book was the development of Harry's understanding about the wizarding world and magic and that magic isn't just a transactional thing that you use to solve problems. It's a state of being, and magic isn't just in the wand, it's 
all around you. We also learn that Harry is a parcel mouth and there are the first breadcrumbs that he himself is a horcrux. So these are all elements that will definitely become more important later. But in the context of this book, it feels a little bit like a lot of information that you aren't really sure where it's all going. And I guess that's just because we haven't really seen the scope of the entire Voldemort problem yet. He hasn't returned yet. We don't have much information on him. So all of this information kind of doesn't add up but we know it will add up but just in like the context of this book it doesn't which makes the book feel a little bit less consequential than the other books but i mean i still enjoyed the book and i'm still picking up on little things that i never picked up on before when i was a kid and that flying car man that thing was cool i can't remember if it ever shows up again after this book or if mr weasley ever gets it back from the forest but i hope that car gets a proper send off that car deserves it the next book was Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. So this story is about a magician named Violet who disappeared 10 years ago, but the present day storyline is about Violet's sister, Sasha. Sasha is trying to move on with her life 10 years after her sister disappeared in the middle of a performance, but Violet was and is just so famous that the public won't let her memory go. Sasha is a complicated character. She wants to grieve in peace, but after 10 years, she's kind of done grieving. And now she's just kind of aggravated that after 10 years, she's still living in her sister's shadow even though the mystery of what happened to Violet was never solved. So this year is the 10 year anniversary of Violet's disappearance and Sasha is not happy about all of the extra attention that it's getting. And to add insult to injury, there's a podcaster who's chasing Sasha down for an interview in order to try to jump on the true crime train and rejuvenate his own career. Sasha says this bothers her because she doesn't like people using Violet's name for clout. But honestly, I think it's really that Sasha is kind of salty that she didn't get as much clout or money as she would have liked from her sister's career. So she doesn't really want anybody else getting that clout or money when she didn't. She's just an extremely bitter person. And she is the worst part of this otherwise really unique story about a badass female magician. I really liked the book, didn't like Sasha, but it was still a really great book. The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart. I assumed this book was going to be like Hotel Magnifique, which I really like, but it really wasn't like that book at all. Hotel Magnifique is whimsical and magical and happy, and The Paradox Hotel was kind of grumpy and sarcastic and political. So this story centers around a time traveling hotel. It functions as an actual hotel for the mega rich who can afford a time traveling hotel room, but really the hotel is a front for the time traveling technology that is up for sale. So the hotel is hosting a conference, which is basically political speak for a giant sales meeting. The US government and the representatives are going to be there. The Saudi prince is going to be there. And they're all coming to the hotel with the intention of buying the technology for their own use. So there is a political struggle. Meanwhile, our main character, January, is the hotel's security officer, and she is suffering from a sort of time sickness. This means that her sense of time is messed up and she's seeing things in front of her that are either in the past or in the future. And so basically, her sense of reality is kind of messed up. She doesn't know if what she's seeing is in the present or if it was in the past or in the future. So she's basically losing her sense of reality. So on the first day of the conference, January goes into a guest room and she sees a dead body on the bed. Nobody else can see this dead body. And so she has to figure out who this person is on her own. And she finds out that he is a pretty important person. So she needs to find out when this guy was even killed. When is it going to happen? Can she prevent it? Why was he killed? All of the questions. So she is trying to figure this out and prevent this while everyone around her is basically working against her because they just believe she has time sickness and she can't be trusted. They're just writing her off as crazy because they say she has time sickness. Even just repeating it now, it all sounds so interesting. But overall, this book was a disappointment. I just couldn't get into it. I didn't connect with any of the characters and I felt like nobody had a good personality. January was kind of grumpy and sarcastic and so she was just a little bit unpleasant. But besides that, everybody else like didn't have really any personality, like not a bad personality like Sasha, just 
no personality. I felt like they were walking speech bubbles. Like they came in to say their lines and then they just went poof and they just disappeared and no personality to be found. And so I couldn't relate with anybody. I couldn't see how January really related with anybody because nobody else had a personality to relate to. So yeah, this book was a disappointment. It was just such an interesting concept, but I don't think it was executed well at all. And I honestly don't remember how everything worked out and I don't really care. And that's sad. So the next book was Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So we went from a flying car to a triple-decker magical purple bus. Did I think it would get cooler than a flying car? No, but it just did. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, it's the point in the story where Harry actually has skin in the game that he understands. Like, I guess he always did, but he didn't really understand. But now he understands just by the way of Sirius is after him. Up until this point, we knew that Voldemort wanted to kill Harry and that he could possibly come back full force. But the gravity of the entire situation was kind of lost on Harry. And Harry, he was just a kid getting used to this new world. In this book, Harry has actual danger coming at him. Or so he thinks. Sirius didn't actually want to hurt him. But throughout the book, he thinks Sirius wants to kill him. This really just ups the stakes for Harry and it makes it that much more engaging. It also changes the tone of the books. This story had a lot more dark themes and the atmosphere was more mysterious and perilous rather than curious and magical. Needless to say, I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this book, I will link that video down below and in the cards as well. The next book was Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This book follows Lux, her boyfriend Nico, and two other girls named Brittany and Emma, and two more people, Jack and Eliza, that they meet on the supposedly deserted Moreau Island. There's a lot of people in this story, but that's something I like in stories because it makes it more interesting with all of the different relationships. Lux and Nico are both somewhat lost in life. Lux's mom died from cancer and she never really found her way in life after her mom's death. Nico is a stubborn rich kid and he is lost because he doesn't want to accept any of his family's money in order to avoid their control. This would be fine, but the thing is, if you're not going to take money from your parents, you have to do something to make money of your own because you have to get money from somewhere. Brittany and Emma claim to be college besties, but it's obvious that there's something more to their relationship that they aren't telling the rest of the group. Jack and Eliza are suspicious just because they are that mystifying breed of perfect people. Good looking, lots of money, perfect glamorous life. There's always something weird about those people. So this is the story of what happens when all of these people convene on Moreau Island, an island in the Pacific with a dark history of injustice. On the surface, this story has great summer vibes. It's sunny and tropical, but underneath there are darker threads and theme, and it has just the perfect amount of eeriness. It makes the perfect end of summer going into fall mystery thriller. I really liked it. I have an entire video about it. That will be linked down below and in the cards as well. The next book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This has been my favorite Harry Potter book so far. There's just so much going on in this book. The main plot is just so epic and riveting, and there are so many little side plots that bring up just a whole host of important themes that make the book seem so relevant. You would think this is just a kid's series, but this plot brings up commentary on bigotry, slavery, wealth and poverty, political corruption, cults, tabloid culture, and all of that fits in this book. Granted, it's a big book. And in this book, we get to explore Ron and Hermione's personalities and interests a lot more than we ever did in any of the previous books. Before, everything they did just revolved around Harry, but now they are growing into their own as main characters in their own right instead of just being Harry's psychics. I felt like overall, this was a little bit of a reprieve of the darkness that was in Prisoner of Azkaban. The majority of the story was just more lighthearted. That definitely changed at the end when Cedric died and it was like a dark cloud coming over. But for most of it, it was lighthearted and like just a ton of fun. That change of pace was really nice because we do know what is coming in the next book and it was just a nice run up for all of the political shenanigans that we know are coming for us in Order of the Phoenix. I had such a good time reading it. It kind of left me with a little bit of sense of dread of what's to come, but it was just such a great time. And now I think this is my favorite of the books.
yeah. It was just amazing. So the next book is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I haven't quite finished this book at the time of this recording, but I've read enough of it that I think I can speak my thoughts on it. So this book follows a woman named Lily Wilder. Lily is running a tour guide business where she takes adventurous tourists out into the wilderness on a kind of fake hunt for hidden treasure. Running this business isn't Lily's dream, but after a series of unfortunate events where she lost her family's ranch, she's doing this to make ends meet and follow in her dad's treasure hunting footsteps. 10 years prior, Lily had her entire life planned out with a guy named Leo, but one day Leo got a phone call that his mom was in an accident and he left to go and be with his family, promising to come back and he never did. He basically just ghosted Lily. And so now, all these years later, who should show up with his lame guy friends for an outdoorsy adventure? You guessed it. So Christina Lauren is known for writing romance novels, but this book is different from any of the other books they've written. The romance is definitely there, but that's but it's not the entire story. This is definitely an outdoorsy survival mystery treasure hunting, cover up a crime kind of story. I'm really liking this new style. Don't get me wrong, I like relationships. But I get tired of reading stories that treat relationships like they're developing in a vacuum. Like there are other things going on in the world and in their lives besides their relationship. So this book has the romantic element between adults might I add, that's important to me. But it also has the treasure hunting adventure and outdoorsy vibe, and I just really like it. So the last book I'm gonna talk about is a book that I started but didn't finish. And I'm not sure if I, I'm not actually sure if I'm going to finish it. And it is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is like the fantasy book that everyone talks about. It's on the top of every recommended fantasy list and it's just like the book. It, I feel like it's accepted as one of the best fantasy books. I don't know if it's up against Harry Potter. I feel like there's no comparison just with what I've read so far, but I digress. So I'm really not very far in. I'm not sure if I'm planning on finishing it. It's not a DNF yet. I don't know. I guess I'm still just on the fence about it. But it's just, I'm just on a quest to find a fantasy book or series that I really thoroughly enjoy besides Harry Potter. However, Harry Potter just has that nostalgic factor for me, so that's gonna be tough to beat. So at this point, I've tried several fantasy books and series, and I haven't really enjoyed any of them. So I thought it's about time that I just try something different. I never really got into audiobooks, I really just like the experience of reading a book, of reading a physical book, because I like that I can pace it however I want. Like I can read faster or slower. I can go back and like reread a line if I really liked it or just missed something or didn't understand something. So, and that's not really as easy with audiobooks. So, so that's why I never really got into audiobooks. I just prefer to read with my eyes. But since that method of interacting with fantasy books hasn't really resonated with me, I thought I would try something different. So I downloaded the audiobook of A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I listened to the first four chapters while I was like folding laundry and doing house chores. And this is gonna sound so strange, but so I, I was listening to it while I was folding laundry and my mind was thinking about folding laundry. Like usually the reason why I would be listening to an audiobook or listen to anything while I'm doing laundry is so I don't have to think about folding laundry because that's boring. But for some reason, my mind was just wandering to the folding of the underwear more than it was listening to the book. And that thought just baffles me, it scares me actually. So I got the gist of what's going on in the first four chapters, but I didn't really retain any details. And I felt like I caught my mind wandering just more than I think my mind should have been wandering. I don't know what's wrong with me. So those are all of the books that I read this month. Overall, it was a really great month, possibly just because I started the Harry Potter series again, and it's just been such a good time. But also Reckless Girls and Acts of Violet were great. I, those are like two new favorites. There are also some disappointments. The Paradox Hotel was disappointing. 
A Court of Thorns and Roses? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, I had a great time reading this month. It is almost time to start putting together my fall TBR. So that is exciting. I can't wait for fall. I'm so over summer. I can't wait to get into more fall reads. I'm not into super spooky, but I am looking forward to reading some books about witches. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you can never miss any of my book rambles ever again. That is all for today. I will see you next time. Bye.